found this video, then you must be a seeker. Ready to learn about one of the most important tools available to the Foundation? The Huntic Trading Card Game. So why don't we start playing and complete some missions? Hold up, Lock! Our new seekers need to learn a few rules of engagement first! In a game of Huntic, one player leads a team of heroes and tries to complete the goals of the mission at hand! But he doesn't do so without a challenge. The other player is his rival, who will be doing everything he can to stop the mission's success. Shuffle up your deck, Lock. Let's see if you can complete a mission against me. I'll be opposing you by mimicking the tactics of our enemy, the organization. The game is played on the mission map, which is divided into five zones. The zone closest to you is Zone 1, and the one deepest into enemy territory is Zone 5. So your Zone 5 is Dante's Zone 1. Also on the map is the mission timer. The mission timer is divided into seven rounds. When the timer counts down to seven, I'm out of time to finish the mission. As long as I finish the mission in time, it means I win. If Locke hasn't completed the mission by the time those seven rounds are up, I was able to stop him and I win. Locke, I have chosen your mission at random from the mission cards in your collection. And your goal is to retrieve the Ring of Arc! <laughs> For this mission, we put the Ring of Arc into Zone 4. And then I just send out my heroes to carry it back to my base at Zone 1. Not a problem for a seeker of my talent. <laughs> you need to pick up your opening hand of cards first. After you've shuffled your deck, pick up the top five cards. These are the cards you can use during the first rounds of the game. Each later turn, we'll both draw two new cards. We both get new titans as the game goes on. Look at this awesome card, Seekers. This is a hero card. Heroes can be Seekers or Titans. You need to put heroes onto the map if you're going to succeed at your mission. And your rival will also be playing hero cards to stop you. But you can't just put your heroes anywhere. Right. You can only put new heroes in Zone 1. In this game, Players take turns making plays during each round, until both players have nothing else they want to do. Then you move the timer to the next round. Players alternate who will go first each round. The player on the mission goes first on rounds two, four, and six. The defending player gets to go first on rounds one, three, five, and seven. This is the first round, so you are the defending player. You're up, Dante. For my first move, I will put Metsy into play. Playing a hero takes my turn, so that means it's now Locke's move, if he's not too scared. Me afraid of one hero? I don't think so. I've got my own hero to play. Back to me then. I play a second hero. Your move, Locke. My first hero, Shinobi, was a major hero card. Each player can only play one major hero card each round, okay? But not every hero is a major hero. Some cards are minor heroes. Each round, you can play as many minor heroes from your hand as you want. Well, I'll play my next hero in Zone 1 next to Shinobi. Back to you, Dante. My first two heroes were both minor, so I can still play a major hero this round. Say hello to Morgan the Knife Lock. Playing heroes is not the only thing you can do when it's your turn. You can also move your heroes around the mission map. That's right. I can make my heroes on the map take action and work on our mission. You and your rival will still go back and forth, taking turns using your heroes or playing new ones from your hand. The ring is in zone four, so I better get these heroes moving. One of the things a hero can do is to move one or two zones in either direction. I'm going to start by moving Springer forward two zones. Only heroes that are ready or face up can move. After a hero moves, it is turned sideways and becomes exhausted. That lets everyone know it's already made its move this round. Heroes don't ready until the beginning of the next round on the timer, so be careful when you move them! Just like you to rush into the field. I'll match you by moving Strix two zones forward. Just what I thought you'd do, Dante. But did you notice that my Shinobi card has a special power? Many heroes have unique powers. Shinobi has super speed, so it can move up to three zones straight into zone four with the ring. Sorry, Locke, but your path is blocked. You can't move forward through a zone that an enemy hero is in. I have one of my heroes in Zone 3, so you can't make that move. I'll just have to go with a different plan, then. Instead of moving, I'll put another minor hero into play. 
I hope this doesn't mess with your plans. Remember Metsy Lock? I move it into Zone 3 and start a fight. A fight? Yes, Lock. Whenever you move a hero into a zone that also has an enemy hero in it, you can choose to start a fight. That means Dante could have started a fight with his last move, too. That's right. But why start a losing battle when I can wait and have my forces work together to defeat you? See, when a fight starts, all heroes in that zone take part in it. So it's a two-on-one fight? That's not very fair. When your heroes work together, you're more likely to win the battle. Any skilled seeker should know this. So let's see who wins this fight. Every hero has an attack number that shows how strong they are, and a defense number that shows how many attacks they can take before they're knocked out, or KO'd, and forced to leave the adventure. The first thing we do in a fight is add up how many attacks each side has. My two heroes have a total of four attacks. Since I only have one hero in this zone, my attack total is just two. Next, we each get to aim our attacks at the heroes we're fighting. Since you only have one hero in this zone, all four of my attacks are aimed at Springer. But you, Locke, you have to make a choice. You only have two attacks, which isn't enough to defeat both my heroes, who have a total of three defense. So you need to carefully decide where to aim your attacks. I aim all my attacks at Strix. At this point, any heroes that have taken a number of attacks equal to or greater than their defense are knocked out or KO'd. When your heroes are KO'd, take them off the mission map and put them into your own discard pile off to the side. Each of us lost one of our guys. Yes, but I still have a hero in Zone 3 to block your progress. Like I told you earlier, Dante, I have a plan. I have an action card in my hand that'll take me to the ring. Using an exhaust action card from your hand is something else a hero can do. To play one, just exhaust a ready hero, do what the action card says, and put the used action card into your discard pile. I still have Enderby here in Zone 1. It's going to play the avoidance card. This card says that all of my heroes get the special power Unblockable this round. Unblockable heroes can move through any zone, even if that zone has an enemy hero in it. That means on my next turn, Shinobi will be able to go right past your hero in Zone 3. Avoidance also lets me draw a card. Well played, Locke. But I have an action I'd like to play as well. This card is not an exhaust action, but a free action. Playing a free action takes my turn, but since I'm doing it, it doesn't exhaust any of my heroes. I'll play Designated Hitter, targeting Morgan the Knife. This card returns Morgan the Knife to my hand, and lets me put a new hero into play in that zone. Someone who should be able to handle Shinobi with ease. Back to you, Locke. Hmm, that might make things a little rough, but okay. Here we go. I move Amit Heart Eater forward and start a fight. So I have a total of four attacks. Not so fast there, Dante. This fight isn't going to be as easy as you think. I have another action card in my hand to use. Ah, you must have a powerful combat action card. That's right, Dante. Combat action cards are the only type of actions that can be played during a fight. Just like free actions, they do not require me to exhaust a ready hero. A good move, Locke. So you play the combat action honor guard. But do you understand how it works? Yep. Honor Guard subtracts two enemy attacks from this zone. And since Amit Heart Eater only has four attacks, that means you will only be doing two attacks. Not enough to KO Shinobi. But Shinobi isn't going to KO Amit either. Shinobi's four attacks are not enough to KO Amit Heart Eater. What a great surprise, Locke! With your combat action card, you kept Shinobi in the game so he could pick up the ring! He's right, Locke. You planned this mission well so far. Thanks. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make my move. For my move, I'm going to have Shinobi pick up the Ring of Arc. The Ring of Arc says you gain control of it if you have a hero in that zone. All you have to do is order Shinobi to pick it up! Not a problem. I'll use my turn to make Shinobi pick up the ring. Now he'll carry it with him wherever he moves. But if he gets KO'd... I know, I know. He'll drop it in that zone. Hmm. I'm done for this round. Me too. Since neither of us wants to play more cards, that means the first round ends. Time to move on to round two. At the start of each new round, all exhausted heroes get ready for action and are turned upright. Things look really interesting. You've got the ring, but I've got some tough heroes in your way. Maybe so. However, still, you won't stop me from getting the ring back to my zone one before the time's up. <laughs>
Maybe or maybe not. A lot can change and there are still six rounds to go. Well then, fellow Seekers, that pretty much wraps up basic training. But before you go, remember, as Dante just said, a lot of things can happen, but the patterns stay the same. Now you can go get started on your own Huntic missions, okay? With the Huntic trading card game, all the tools are in your hands. Search out booster packs to keep discovering new titans and new missions to complete! Exciting adventures will always be at your fingertips. So everybody, hunt it, go!